Today you join me in the rural outskirts of Sheffield in South Yorkshire. This is Stocksbridge Transmitter Site. It's a classic example of a radio site that's become a shell of its former self. What once looked like this, now looks like this, with the main tower virtually empty, another lattice tower with its antennas removed, and a cell tower that's gone altogether. Rather confusingly, this place has two names. When referring to the broadcast tower, it's known as Stocksbridge. But when referring to the microwave site, it's known as Hunshelf Bank. As I was filming some shots of this place, the landowner of the farm that surrounds the transmitter site came up to me, naturally curious as to what I was doing, and he couldn't have been any friendlier. We had a good chat about the towers, and they explained that losers like me, for some reason, enjoy visiting and documenting transmitter sites. He told me I was welcome to go onto his land and get some closer shots, and of course I did. First we'll look at this fallen tower. Well, it was actually unbolted from its base and laid down by one of the cell companies. This tower was used for mobile phone antennas until everything was moved to the main microwave site recently, which is now shared by EE, O2, Vodafone and 3UK. It's interesting to see what a mobile phone mast looks like up close, and seeing the top like this is a viewpoint you don't usually get to see. So moving on to the BT tower. Today this is just used by the mobile phone companies and you can see lots of their panel antennas, transceiver units and microwave dishes up and down the tower. When it was built in the 1980s this was full of large BT microwave links heading off in different directions as part of the wider network but these have been removed and placed with cellular infrastructure which of course BT is still involved with via the EE network. From the late 1950s to the 1980s, BT's microwave network provided a large part of its trunk communications capacity and carried telephone, television and radar signals and digital data, both civil and military, across the whole country. Hunshelf Bank linked towards Tinshill in the north and towards Telephone House in Sheffield and Whiteborough down to the south. The BT microwave system was eventually rendered obsolete by the 2000s and was gradually replaced by the installation of a national optical fibre communications network with considerably higher reliability and vastly greater capacity. You can still see all of the mounting brackets which held the microwave dishes in place. At the top of the tower is a set of airway vertical antennas which provide police radio coverage to the area and if you'd like to know more about this topic then check out my last video where we look in detail at the airwave system. At the bottom of the tower is the original microwave transmission building which at one time would have housed all of the transmitters that fed the dishes up and down the tower. Nowadays it looks like it's unused with cut feeders protruding from the panel on the side. Today the feeder trays are still in place but instead they route the coax cables down to the ground and into some trunking that goes under the dirt track in the direction of these huts. Each hut has coax cables entering it and inside are transmitter units for the mobile phone companies. Now let's take a look at the broadcast tower. 
The oldest user here is the television relay that serves this area that sits low down behind the hill, shielded from the signal path of the main transmitter over at Emily Moor. This is a classic digital television relay with its eight crossed log periodic antennas in phase rebroadcasting the signal from Emily Moor over Stocksbridge Town. You can see how the crossed array causes two lobes in the signal path. The receive antenna that picks up the feed from Emily Moor is this single log periodic at the back. Stocksbridge was built in the early 1980s by the IBA and entered service in July of 1980. It served 1,550 people, relaying BBC One on UHF Channel 58, BBC Two on UHF Channel 64, ITV on UHF Channel 61, and UHF Channel 54 was reserved until the 29th of August 1986, when Channel 4 began to broadcast from here. The output power of Stocksbridge analog television transmitter was 12 watts. Analog television was broadcast from here until digital switchover works were carried out on the 7th and 21st of September 2011. From then, the BBC A multiplex was on UHF channel 49, BBC B was on UHF channel 54, and D3 and 4 was on UHF channel 58. From February the 5th 2020, 700MHz clearance took place here, meaning that the frequencies were changed. For more about 700 MHz clearance, I'll link a video below where I go into more detail. The new frequencies were BBC A on UHF channel 40, D3 and 4 on UHF channel 43, and BBC B on UHF channel 46, and these remain in service today. The digital television transmitter outputs just 2.4 watts. BBC National DAB was added to Stocksbridge in May of 2014. The antenna array sits on the top of the tower and consists of two dipoles made by Catherain. You can see they protrude from the mast at different distances and this isn't something I've seen before, but apparently this offset broadens the radiation pattern. The DAB multiplex broadcast from here is BBC National Channel 12 and it receives its feed via satellite using this large dish at ground level. There's a smaller dish on the mast too, which is probably for telemetry. Relays have telemetry feeds for monitoring, either by ADSL or fibre, or at sites like this where a line isn't available, they use satellite. Also on the farm is this small lattice tower, which at one point in time housed a couple of dipoles. What they did, I can't be sure, but today it sits empty. At the bottom is the transmission hut, and the compound is surrounded by a fence. So that's a look at Stocksbridge, or Hunshelf Bank, whichever you prefer. If you'd like to see more transmitter site tours, then let me know in the comments. There's also an ever growing playlist down there for you to binge too.